I turn a six dollar blaster into a death machine. Hello, what is up guys? I'm your host Gordon and welcome to another What Am I video. What I got over here is something very interesting. This is a modified rapid strike. If you guys remember the previous video, I actually bought a rapid strike for only six dollars. And of course, as a result, I actually bought an Australia variant, which is a way weaker version as compared to the international variant, which comes with an orange buttstock. Check out the video in the link in the description. NF Strike actually sent me an upgrade kit which is actually meant to adding more features to the blasters such as select fire, a programmable holographic display and in theory that's about it. So how on earth I actually accidentally turned this blaster into a death machine? More on that after the intro. Okay, okay, we are back guys. So as you can see in terms of aesthetic, we actually get a 3D printed holographic display over here because there is a built-in display in the holographic side where it will display all the crucial information that you will need for a blaster. So let us talk about the installation first. The installation is very straightforward. You will first have to unbolt all the screws that is on the blaster, take off the shell and take off whatever guts that is in in the blaster and just replace it with the 3D printed parts that was being provided. It is just a drop-in kit without any modification. As per instruction, there is actually some soldering that is needed, but if you actually do it my way, there is absolutely no soldering or whatsoever. So usually you will have to solder the wire directly on the flywheel cage board, which of course requires you to remove the previous wire that was being soldered on the board. So basically I just grab a plastic quick release wire connector and just connect both of this wire together. It looks kind of janky exteriorly, just that you might not be able to install the unjamming door over here. But usually my playstyle looks is not that important. And I've realized most installation guide requires you to change the pair of motors. And of course, Gordon being Gordon in this channel especially, we are gonna install it in the most jankiest way possible and still make it works. So what I'm gonna do is to reuse the default motor to test it out and see what kind of result that we will get after installing this kit. This kit comes with a a very thick wire, of course, and XT60 connectors as well. But since we are using the default mode over here, we are going to connect this wire with a 2S battery with the jankiest way possible, but still make things work and it is safe to use. I've been testing this blaster for the past week, so I didn't encounter any problems. So yeah, it is safe, approved by me. Holy moly. So in order to activate the battery, in order to turn on the display over here, we have to pull the uh, raving switch over here for like two seconds. And the display will require a couple of seconds to boot up. So what the display will show you when you ran out of ammo or you do not have a mag being installed in the blaster, it will ask you to reload in two language, English and Chinese. And when the blaster is fully loaded, it will show you a very cool looking aiming holographic like color display. Literally looks like something from a Halo game. So for this blaster, it came with three modes by default. Of course, we got the safety, we got the single fire, we got the burst fire, as well as the full auto. Man, it is so good that a Rapid Strike comes with select fire. And what I've actually noticed after I install everything in the Rapid Strike, even though using a 2S battery, the motor raving is way faster than before. And check out this rate of fire though. Holy moly! And I'm just using a 2S LiPo over here with the default motor. Apparently someone actually told me in my previous video in the comment section that the control board is actually limiting power delivery to the motor, which results in slower flywheel spinning. And with the new guts that's being placed in there, it basically removes the limiter so that we can unleash the beast. The selector is at the left hand side and on the right hand side of the side over here, there is a knob over here which allows you to adjust a lot of stuff, such as the brightness and of course user interface selection which is super cool I'm telling you. You can even do custom settings such as adjusting the firing behavior of the blaster and of course there is a built-in USB port over here for you to program like custom setting like the firing behavior or something like that but that is something that I do not dare to touch. I'm pretty sure that is definitely out of my capability. So I guess that's all of the quirks and features of this blaster so without further ado let us test the blaster out shall we?
Okay, okay, we are back, guys. I mean, that was really unexpected. We actually get a performance boost due to this kit over here. I mean, previously, by default, it goes something like what? Like 60, 70 FPS? That's a joke, man. And right now, after the upgrade, it goes at least 82 FPS all the way to 97 FPS. And not only the FPS, the rate of fire improves as well. So right now, instead of just 5 to 6 meters, Meters, hitting a target right now in 7 meters or even 8 meters with a little bit of arcing is definitely not an issue at all. And of course, so far handling this kit over here, I did not encounter any weirdness or whatsoever, which is a good thing. And in terms of aesthetic, definitely a huge upgrade with the uh, holographic side over here. I mean, the color kind of blends in there pretty perfectly, which of course making this blaster passes the wall test even more. So yeah, I guess that's it for the kit over here. It's a very simple upgrade. It's just a drop-in kit over here. I'm really happy with the looks by the way. So if you guys like this video, feel free to smash the like button and not to forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video. Yadios guys!